Hi guys, good evening and welcome to Everything Metallurgy and welcome to day 13 of 100 days 100 concepts. So today we'll just look at a concept which we all commonly know which we studied in mechanical metallurgy which is called CRSS. Okay, so in this short video I just want to briefly explain about this CRSS. Okay, so CRSS is nothing but it's an abbreviation of critical resolved shear stress. Critical resolve shear stress. So it's usually denoted by tau r. Now, as a definition, if you look at the CRSS, what is the CRSS? So basically, we know that in any kind of material, we have different stress levels, and in any different material, we require different stress in order for the plastic deformation to take place. So this CRSS is the minimum stress or you know we can call minimum threshold stress okay which is needed for plastic deformation to take place or you can say for yielding okay so what is yielding it's nothing but there is a permanent shape change in it or plastic deformation is taking place so CRSS of a material can be explained as the minimum amount of stress you know uh, it's usually called a threshold stress where if you only go above this particular level there will be yielding taking place in my system of course this CRSS is uh, depending on many criteria out of which uh, one important one is temperature strain rate Strain rate is nothing but the rate of change in strain with respect to time. And finally, the composition itself. Okay, these are some macroscopic, uh, you know, you can say that these are some macroscopic factors which affect my CRSS. But, you know, the slip, uh, when we talk about slip in any crystal, what is slip? Slip is basic phenomena which is driving for plastic deformation so slip is required for plastic deformation to take place so let's consider a single crystal okay what is single crystal that means you only have one grain in the material okay so you have many nickel based super alloys and uh, you know tungsten titanium based alloys in which single crystals have wide range of applications generally in aerospace applications okay so the slip in this single crystal usually depends on the magnitude of the stress that we are applying usually we call that to be the shear stress okay so the magnitude of shear stress the geometry of the crystal structure What is geometry of crystal structure? Let us say lattice parameters and uh, what is the area, surface area and all the stuff. And finally, it also depends on the orientation of active slip planes. Okay. So, what are these active slip planes? So, basically, we all know that slip is resulting in ductility of a material so ductility is directly proportional to the number of active slip systems what is a slip system it is a combination of a slip direction and a slip plane where my dislocation tend to move easily which are again nothing but the close pack directions and the close pack planes okay so we all know that in fcc we have 12 slip systems whereas in bcc if you try to count you have how many you have 48 slip systems but if you see the series of ductility fcc will always be more ductile than bcc why so if you see here as i just now said that fcc is having how many 12 slip systems and bcc is having 48 slip systems correct slip will not directly you know take place on any slip system it needs certain 
criteria that means the active slip systems that means the planes or the directions in which slip can easily take place is limited is limited by what is limited by this particular crss of that particular material of that particular slip system okay so the number of active slip systems in bcc are less than the number of active slip systems in fcc so that's why fcc is considered to be more ductile as compared to bcc materials now how can we calculate the crss so we all know a classic derivation of crss so just take a cylindrical single shell okay let's assume that this is a cylindrical single crystal okay of area a not so this area is a not okay and let's say i have one slip system in this particular material okay so let me take this to be my slip okay slip plane so let this be my slip plane now let us assume that i have a longitudinal load applied something like this p so what is this particular direction i'll assume this to be my slip direction that means the dislocation is moving on this plane in this particular direction whereas how a plane is you know usually denoted a plane is always characterized by its normal so this is my plane normal okay right so as i already said that uh, this will be depending on the orientation the geometry and also it is depending upon the magnitude of the shear stress so all these are covered in this particular assumption that we took so load p is nothing but the magnitude of load right slip direction is nothing but my orientation how my slip plane is oriented and all the stuff how it is being magnified and quantified i'll just explain and what is the other thing that we have the geometry so that's the limit represented by the cross section area so let's take these particular angles between the slip direction and the load to be phi and the other thing the load and the normal be lambda okay now if you want to uh, write sigma it is equal to what p by a not okay this is what the area that is applied on the cross section a not but just think about it is this the same stress acting on my slip plane you have to think about this no because only components of load is acting on it okay right so think about it we only take the component of load that is acting on it and what load that we want we want shear stress so we are considering the shear force so only shear forces are usually you know involving or helping for the slip to take place so what is uh, the shear force here it is in the direction of or it is in the slip direction so what will this be equal to this will be equal to my p times cos phi okay don't worry i think i have interchanged the uh, angles but don't worry we can denote whatever way we want okay so my load or the shear force is what p cos phi right and what is the area it is acting on which area it is acting on this as okay and if you do some basic trigonometric operations you get this to be a not by cos lambda okay so you get this particular thing so if you just calculate the same formula for stress what is stress sigma is equal to load per unit area so here my load is p cos phi divided by as so if you just put this particular value you get p by a not into cos phi into cos lambda so what is p by a not again it is represented by sigma and this particular stress is called crss okay so minimum this amount of stress is required for me in order to start the slip on this particular slip system right so slip only begins when 
द शेयरिंग स्ट्रेस ओके आई थिंक आई जस्ट मेड ए मिस्टेक या इट्स मल्टीप्लीकेशन सिग्मा इंटू कॉस फाइव इंटू कॉस लैमडा ओके सो हियर यू मस्ट ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दैट स्लिप ओनली बिगन वेन द शेयरिंग स्ट्रेस रीचेस दिस पर्टिक्युलर वैल्यू दैट इज सी आर एस एस सो यूजली आई कैन ऑलवेज राइट लाइक दिस ओके फॉर स्लिप आई कैन राइट लाइक दिस राइट so this is about the concept of crss and when this crss is maximum so crss is maximum when you have phi is equal to lambda is equal to 45 degrees okay and crss is zero when we have phi or lambda to be 90 degree so this will be what here tau rss will be In this particular case, sigma by two, right? So cos forty five will be getting one by root two, and both are one by root two, so I have sigma by two. Similarly, here what it represents? If CRS is zero, it represents that there is no active slip system that is available for deformation. Okay, so there won't be any yielding that is taking place. So if you still apply the load, what happens? It will fracture. Okay, rather than slip. Okay, so if CRS is zero, that means you must see that it is not an active slip plane. So there is no dislocation traveling on that particular slip plane. So there will be no yielding or no plastic deformation. Sudden fracture can be observed even if you are, you know. put some stress on that particular slip system so this is about crss so if you like this video please hit the like button and also do visit our website to go check out the best test series that is available right now for gate metallurgy and also do check out our video courses if someone is interested to join for you know full guidance for gate empty right so if you like this video please hit the like button and also share this video to all the gate metallurgy aspirants and your friends thank you for watching guys thank you we'll meet you tomorrow with one more interesting concept thank you